Welcome to Option Trades today. I'm Tony the Bad Batista, and I've got a trade idea for you today. December 27, 2022. Can you believe the year is almost over and the Santa Claus rally is kind of stalled, stopped, started, stalled, stopped. And presently, if we take a look at the market, even the S&Ps are down around three handles. Doesn't tell the whole story. We've had about a 60-point uh, move or more in the market from 3,900 down to 3,837. Uh, We're about mid-range for the day uh, here at almost unchanged. Volatility up seven cents. Usually you have between forward slash VX and the overall market, meaning the E-mini S&Ps, usually have a two to one ratio, meaning if the E-mini S&Ps are down a dollar, uh, or one percent, excuse me. You'll have a two to two and a half percent move in volatility. As you can see, volatility right now um, higher by a couple of couple of percentage points, point three zero, a third of a percentage point, and the market unchanged. So no real tell there on what's going on in the market. So I went to what I normally like to do. I always go and look at my high option volume. And I try to find a stock that has a high IVX five-day change. I'm just clicking this right now to go from low to high or high to low like I am right now. And I like to have a high IV rank, preferably over 30. And I like uh, there to be no earnings. Now, it's the end of the year. I'm not looking to, to light anybody's um, world on fire here today. And I did listen to a lot of the comments that you put down um, in our... Uh, platform uh, when you're looking at on YouTube. Uh, some of the comments, I appreciate the very kind words. Please subscribe uh, to our YouTube channel and you can catch all of my option trades today uh, two times a week on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Um, but you wanted to trade with less buying power. So that's what we're going to look at here or at least make it as small as you want to. I'm going to Adobe. Let's take a look at some of uh, the internals of Adobe. It does have IVX, that's the five day change. It does have volatility expanding. I like to see volatility expanding into uh, placing a trade where I'm going to be selling premium. And it does have an IV rank over 30, just over 30 at 31 and change. It does have earnings coming um, in February, but not until after uh, expiration. I believe it might even be in March in Adobe. So let's take a look uh, at what we're going to trade here in Adobe. Now, January has 24 days to go. We're usually closing, rolling, uh, or bringing a trade, an existing trade from January when there's around 21 days to expiration. Uh, so I'm not going to put on a new trade in January. I'm going to go to February. February has 52 days, 45 is optimal. The closest to 45 in the monthly options are the ones that I like to trade, especially in a stock like Adobe, which has okay markets, but not great markets. If you wanted to trade something in SPY um, or something that's very, very liquid and you wanted to be uh, closer to, to 45 days or maybe you wanted to go to these weekly options in February because of earnings or something, the stock you're trading, you'll see here that the markets are quite tight, penny two, three dollars wide, plenty of volume also um, throughout here. I would be very I would I would be happy with you doing that. It doesn't matter to me. But Adobe, A-D-B-E, if you take a look at its options with those weekly options, very little volume, and the markets are almost 50, 60 cents wide. So for me, that makes the options closest to 45 days that are not in the monthlies a non-event. I'm not even going to look at it. So we're going to February with 52 days to go. I'm going to do a defined risk trade because uh, I'm, I'm listening to everybody else uh, out there who who uh, asked me to put on a trade that has like uh, less buying power and um, uh, a defined risk trade. So let's take a look at one here. So what do you think? Adobe, let's take a look at a, at a chart. Uh, you can see over the last couple of months, it's been going absolutely sideways. Volatility has come down a little bit, but it's creeping up over the last uh, couple of days. So I'm going to look to put on a strategy that's that's basically wanting the stock to go sideways, to continue in this sideways range that it's had. 
What's a great strategy that has defined risk? You probably guessed it already, an iron condor. So let's take a look at that. On the downside, I'm going to go to the 300 strike. I'm going to make it $20 wide. We've done some um, uh, research on whether uh, like a $200 stock, maybe $20 wide, a $300 stock, maybe $30 wide. Those numbers seem to work out. I decided to do a $20 wide one here just to use less buying power. I would be happy with you going $30 wide. Uh, it certainly would be warranted in here. I'm going to uh, remember, the wider you get, the more it acts like a strangle. I like to place a lot of strangles. Um, the tighter you get, the less it acts like a strangle, and it'll have a lower probability of success. So I went 300 to 80. Um, you can see here you're collecting around $3.20 on that. The call spread is going to collect a little bit less than that. Let's uh, change this from volume for a quick second and look at uh, in the money. Uh, percentage of in the money, which is something I like to have on here, is very close to the delta of the option. You can see here the delta of the option and the percentage of being in the money are very, very similar to each other. Um, you can use either one. Um, I usually default to delta, but I look at both. Um, I already showed you the put side. Uh, the put side is a standalone trade, has a 77% pop. So if you're just bullish on Adobe, that would be something that I would look to place uh, on this trade. Collecting um, not quite as high a credit as we would like if it was just a standalone trade. We'd like to collect one-third the width of the strikes, so I would probably make this a $10 wide spread instead of a $20 wide spread, or sell an option that's a little bit closer, like the 310 put, uh, and do the 290, where I can get closer to 5 dollars or $6, where I would be getting around... Um, one third the width of the strikes. But as a standalone trade here, sit, fits our criteria, has a good probability of profit. I'd be using $700. I'm sorry, I'd be using 16, almost $1,700 in buying power on one side. I'm going to do both sides because I want Adobe, I want to benefit from it going sideways. So why not use the same amount of buying power and have a probability of collecting a little bit more money or a little bit uh, higher success with risk to both sides? All right, so on the upside, what am I going to do? I'm going to sell the 380 call. It's exactly the same delta as the put uh, that I'm selling. It has a 21 uh, delta, and I'm going to go $20 wide. I'm going to go up to 400 on here, and you'll notice that we're selling this. I actually got filled at 604. Uh, mid price is 605. The bid and the offer are a little bit wide. Markets are about 15 cents wide here on the calls. Uh, they're equally as wide on the puts. Um, I got filled with the stock right here at 604. Maybe you can get filled at 605 or 603 or 602. Um, I only did a limited number. I want to do more of the trade, but I wanted to see if it moved a little bit while I was doing the podcast for you, and then I could just place the trade live. As you can see here, my max loss went down from almost $1,700 to about $1,400. That's because I'm collecting that extra credit. I have $6 um, worth of credit on this trade, uh, which means I, they only hold as much buying power uh, as the width of the strikes. The stock can't close at zero and close at infinite at the same time. So the computer knows that you have only $1,400 worth of risk on the trade. My probably a profit went down from 77% on just one side of the trade to 61%. I like to put on iron condors that have a probably a profit of 60 and above. So I'm right there uh, with that. My delta on this trade is delta zero. To me, it, this is about as delta neutral as you can get on a trade. And it makes almost $8 a day in theta decay. That's assuming that the IV rank, the implied volatility doesn't move. If the implied volatility goes higher, um, then I won't make that theta decay per day. And if the implied volatility goes lower, I'll make more of that theta decay. $1,400 worth of, of risk on the trade. My max profit, 605. Everybody always writes, what's your uh, target on this? Uh, like, when, when will you close this trade? Well, if you hold it to our parameters uh, and you're looking for 50%, you're going to be holding this trade till it's closest to about 25 days. So you'll be holding this for about 25 to 27 days. If a trade works out perfectly, um, we usually are able to collect max profit on the trade, which is 50% of the credit received, um, in about three weeks. That's how the that's how it that works. 
For me, I've been taking my profits a lot quicker on this podcast. I, you know, around a buck or something like that is my is my goal. I figure if I eat like a bird, let me poop like a bird too. I don't want to eat like a bird um, and poop like an elephant. So I don't want to hold this and not do anything with it. How would I adjust this trade? Well, I would adjust this trade by using more buying power. Now, that's not what everybody does here on the network, uh, but I found that it works best for me. Now, what would I do on this trade? For argument's sakes, let's say the stock has moved down and it's moved down quickly uh, by, by $20 or $30. I would look to move down this 380 call by $20 or $30. And again, you'd be using more buying power. The buying power is gonna go up on this trade, but again, I'll be able to collect some delta on that trade. So what I'm trying to do here is I'm always trying to reduce my delta exposure. So when the delta on this trade gets to about 10-ish or so, what think about what's going to happen. It's going to be very heavy on one side. This spread right now that's giving me uh, eight or nine deltas to it is going to be giving me you know, two, three, or four deltas. And the other side is going to give, be giving me, you know, 18, 19, or 20 deltas. So when this whole spread becomes around plus or minus 10 deltas, I will roll up the untested side to reduce my overall deltas to around five. Now that's just a parameter. It's not set in stone, but everybody always asks, when would I look to do, do something with this trade? I look at this trade as a synthetic strangle. Uh, especially when I'm doing it in an IRA count or something like that. So I treat it like a strangle. All right, everybody, like I asked you, please like and subscribe to uh, to, to Tasty um, Live podcast here um, on YouTube and on podcasts, wherever you, wherever you get your podcasts. Also, do me a favor, open up an account uh, at Tastyworks, open, transfer, move your account uh, to Tastyworks. You know what? Do it before year end. Why not? No time like today. Thank you for your time.